Today is 9-11-2014 on Thursday. It's now 12.48 p.m. in the afternoon Pacific Time. And up next, by Dave Hodges of The Common Sense Show. This is dated September 11, 2014. The Army's plan for martial law carried out under UN authority. Since February of 2014, I have written about a series of planned actions on the part of the U.S. Army which would give them martial law power over the people of the United States. In the same time frame, I have written extensively about the futuristic plans of the United Nations Agenda 21 to create densely populated megacities. This article examines the perfect storm that is presently occurring which is witnessing the manifestation of Agenda 21 living conditions in America and a vicious martial law occupation force which will be presiding over these megacities. No speculation is required. The government admits complicity in this plot by their own actions in, the, in their documents. The title page of this PDF is displayed below. and That's a PDF file. U.S. Army document guarantees martial law within an Agenda 21 nightmarish scenario. The smoking gun document that virtually guarantees an Army enforced martial law way of life within an Agenda 21 megacities framework follows. Megacities and the United States Army preparing for a complex and uncertain future dated June 2014. Chief of Staff of the Army Strategic Studies Group Megacities Concept Team are the following individuals. An Army report boldly proclaims that American troops need to be ready and willing to enter New York City and other global megacities in the near future. The purpose of this instruction by the Army in the nation's domestic affairs, in violation of pos, posse comitatus, would be to prevent civil unrest, in other words, pre-crime, political uprisings, and protect key infrastructure and natural resources in the national interest. In other words, the American Army will be deployed because what the American people might do. The official Army report is entitled Megacities and the United States Army, and that's a PDF file that you can click that link on, and it was released by the Chief of Staff of the Army Strategic Studies Group. The report disturbingly states that it is inevitable that at some point the United States Army will be asked to operate in a megacity and currently the Army is ill-prepared to do so. Megacities and the U.S. Army Previously on August 27, 2014, I reported on the rapid progress of the megacities concept. It is a United Nations created Agenda 21 plan initiated by the global elite to establish 11 megacity regions, each containing approximately 6 million people. Please note that somebody apparently forgot to tell the UN that the United States has 310 million people, not 66 million, as their future plans call for housing. Nobody in an official capacity dealt with the numerical discrepancy between the present population of the U.S. and the planned population of the United States. And now, very disturbingly, the Army has announced that it is inserting itself into this process. Before proceeding, you may wish to read the psychological reasons why American soldiers would fire on American citizens, and that's a clickable link as it details the well-researched psychological reasons that the U.S. military would fire upon American citizens if ordered to do so. I would also recommend that you read my previous report called The Nightmarish Megacities of the Near Future, and that's a clickable link. These two reports will psychologically prepare the reader to fully understand the clear intentions of the Army as detailed in the following paragraphs. 
the Army and their planned megacity intervention. And here's a map. The aforementioned Army report details the reasons given for why the U.S. Army would insert itself into major cities to deal with civil unrest. With regard to the power of the people versus the power of the state, this Army document leaves no doubt as to which group is a sovereign and the constitutional principle of the sovereign people controlling its government is officially dead and buried. Some of the other reasons that the Army will occupy the megacities will include income disparity, natural disasters, and illicit networks that would dare to challenge the authority of state power. The document goes on to state that the military will be training its forces to oppose those who could engage in the pre-crime activity of influencing the lives of the American population while undermining the authority of the state. You must feel like you have stumbled upon part two of Orwell's classic book, 1984. At this point, a summary statement needs to be made. The Agenda 21 megacities plan, often referred to as America 2050, uh, uh, America 2050, pardon me, will be enforced under the dictates of martial law in which absolutely no political dissident, dissent will be allowed. U.S. Army Techniques, Publication 339.33, Civil Disturbances. I have also previously reported on the Army's August 15, 2014 plan to deal with dissidents and protesters. The new Army manual, known as ATP 339.33, provides discussion and techniques about civil disturbances and crowd control operations that occur in the continental United States and outside the continental United States. The following are diagrams lifted from ATP 339.33, which instructs soldiers how to kill and disable American citizens. How to best kill and maim an American. And there you are. That's a diagram of where to hit the person to be the most effective. Escalation of trauma chart is what it's called. And here are the responses. ATP 339.33 speaks to the Army strategy of deploying snipers at public events and protests and eliminating the leadership of any such activity. This document not only marks the death of the leaders of any civil disobedience, but it marks the death of the First Amendment to the Constitution, as it eliminates any right of the people to peaceably assemble and to allow the people the full expression of the right to express grievances against the government. On February 22, 2014, I revealed the existence of a classified Army document which has been leaked online is entitled FM 339.40, Internment and Resettlement Operations. That's a PDF file you can click on. The document was originally to be kept secret, but everyone in the military command structure, as we know, is not on board with the encroaching tyranny sweeping across this country. The Army did not wait to begin training for the martial law. Takeover. The Army has been diligently training to lock the country down in an Agenda 21 megacities imposed martial law. They did not wait for the release of the aforementioned martial law documents. Specifically, I am referring to the Army's building of a fake $96 million Northern Virginia town, which is being used to train the military to enforce martial law. Of course, the government says that this is a foreign town being used to train our troops to occupy. If this is true, then someone needs to explain why the town has a Christian church, handicapped parking spots, Washington, D.C. subway logos, loading zone signs and road signs in English. A picture is worth a thousand words, as you will see in the following video. And here's the video. U.S. military trains for war on Second Amendment. 
No martial law takeover would be complete without detention camps. And here is a picture of a detention camp. Since the Army documents make it clear that no public dissent against the policies of the prevailing state authority will be permitted, the Army would be compelled to ex establish detention centers to house detention de dissidents. Pardon me. As an aside, please note that the Army does not refer to the prevailing civil authority as duly elected officials or constitutionally mandated authority. Further, there is strong evidence based upon more government documents that the coming and planned detention camps will be manned by foreign troops. In the words of the Army, straight from the internment resettlement ar article, it states the following. IR operations may place soldiers in continuous contact with or near insurgents, terrorists, or criminals who will exploit every opportunity to escape and kill or injure U.S. personnel or multinational partners. And that's a picture of U.N. Uh, vehicles on a flatbed truck. An occupation force is being mobilized. Please allow me to remind the reader that back in late May and early June that the Common Sense Show devoted a lot of attention to the sightings of UN vehicles on American soil, particularly in and around the southern border area of the US. Whether you believe there are Russian troops training on our soil along with other UN peacekeeping troops is an irrelevant irre argument at this point. The above excerpt and the following paragraphs will make it clear regarding the intent to use multinational partners to round up and detain American citizens. The following is a list of agencies involved in the soon-to-be roundups of American citizens who are not drinking from globalist Kool-Aid. And I'm going to have to skip some of this in the interest of time, everybody. Sorry about that. There can be no doubt as to the meaning of the above quote from the manual. This government plans to enlist the aid of foreign troops in conjunction with the UNDHS and FEMA for the purpose of rounding up and detaining American civilians. Segregation of civilian detainees. I have previously been told by my military sources that when families are transported to the IR camps, husbands will be segregated from wives and children from parents. Some scoffed at the details of the report. To those people, I would suggest reading from the IR resettlement documents. And there it is. You are an enemy combatant. Most of us who are detained in these IR camps will be classified as enemy combatants. And you can read more on that. The last sentence is frightening. It says that anyone who supports acts against the U.S. or its foreign mercenaries is not entitled to humane treatment under the Geneva Convention. An offense against the U.S. government could include the failure to turn in your gun or to not pay your taxes. This also opens the door to torture and summary extermination, as you will not likely have any rights. For those who think this is an exaggeration, ask yourself, what does do not meet the criteria defined within the Geneva Convention relative to the treatment of prisoners of war actually mean? Okay, and you can read more on that. The legal justification to snatch you from your home. The following definition of an evacuee should concern all Americans. The definition of the term indicates the right of the military to remove a citizen from their home. And then you can read all about that. Okay, I'm going to have to skip some of this. I'm going to read the conclusion. Just a part of it. I'm running out of time. Do I have to spell it out for you? All of us are Stacy Lynn. The NDAA is for you and for me. 60 mil 66 million of us will be stacked and packed into Agenda 21 nightmares existence enforced by the U.S. Army. This will most likely occur following a false flag event. You will likely be taken from your home at 3 a.m., loaded into transport vehicle, etc., etc., the clothes on your back and shipped to your final des designated IR camp. 
That's going to do it for now. Please stay safe, everybody. Pink out.